online. We participate in this together. So the scripture that Catherine read for us today from Psalm, 119 Psalm, is the longest chapter in the Bible. Uh, our stewardship is based upon God's Word being settled in heaven, as she read that. Our stewardship is based upon God's words of action. Action. No one goes into a job thinking, uh, do they have to go, I'm just going to sit on my laurels. No one goes into a job thinking, says, well, yeah, I'm just going to sit on this. I'm just going to uh, not, not do anything. We go into something, we, we try to do a job, it's, it's action words. Some of the action words that we might see in the Bible, God tells us to go and tell, right? He told us, his disciples to go and tell. That's an action word. He told us to bring, bring others to, uh, to him, to the cross. Bring others to the cross. The Apostle Paul told us that we're to run the race. Now, funny story on that. I hadn't, hadn't planned on that, but Kathy and I are driving into Crown Point, and we're, we're held up for a good 10 minutes because somebody's running a race. Now, from my my, my perspective, it's, and they're stopping all of us driving in the cars trying to get where we, we need to go because these other people are running a race. My question on that is, why is them running a race more important than where I need to be? on a Sunday morning. But they're holding us up to do that. But anyway, God wants us to run this race. And if you're running the race for God, there's not always going to be convenient places where uh, the, uh, the offers are going to stop traffic for you. Satan is going to be against you every step of the way. Every mile you run, every you know, strive that you take, he's going to be against you and he's going to try to trip you up. He's going to try to do everything he can to cause you to break stride as you run that race. But running is an action. Running is an action. As I found out the other night, uh, I went to watch my grandson play play baseball. Uh, it was a, a double header night. And there's nothing worse than your grandson losing two games. As the temperature drops at night at this time of year. But the story about that was that I tried to keep up with my four year old granddaughter. I sympathize with you. <laughs> I sympathize with you and Jim. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I hurt in places yesterday I forgot I had. I mean, I could not keep up with her. Grandpa, let's go here, let's go here, let's go up to the top of this hill. Grandpa, let's roll down this hill. No, 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 Grandpa, let's not do that. But all of these things, as we as we run races, as we run races, as we follow God, as we bring people to Christ, as we go and tell them, as we fight the good fight, as the Apostle Paul said, as we follow the Lord, as we confess our our faults and our sins, as we obey His commandments. Is we hold fast to the faith that He's delivered to us. All of these things are wrapped into a nice little stewardship ball because we're responsible for all those things, all these action words that God has for us today. And whether we're, whether we're young or whether we're older or whether we're mature, whatever our standing is, God wants us to make a difference in the lives of those around us. Why? Because His Word is settled. The scripture that Catherine read for us there from Psalm 119, that particular verse was verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Now let's, I'm going to see a show of hands on this. Has anyone here ever changed their mind on something? It looks like that's a pretty consensus. So there's things that have happened in our lives. Things that we've done, things that we've said, things we've been exposed to that have caused us to change our mind about any particular circumstance. What does the Bible say about God's mind? About His Word? The verse we just read. His Word is settled in heaven when? Forever. 
forever. God doesn't change his mind on things. And, and you probably talk to folks, and I've talked to folks. I remember one guy in particular, as I was trying to witness to him on, a, on the job, on the lunch break one time. And he said to, he said to me, he says, well, you know, I, I just got to tell him that we're all going to stand before God one day, and we're all going to give an account for our lives. He said, yeah, well, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite the orator. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just tell God a thing or two. And he's going to listen to me, and whatever he wants to do with me, he may want to send me to hell, but, but he'll just change his mind after he hears my persuasive argument. <laughs> the guy was a little full of himself, I was the right. But if there's any of us, whether it's him or anybody else, that thinks that we're going to stand before God and we're going to talk him out of something, when his word says, he says that my word is settled forever. And when God says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, there's only one way to get to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. That's through the Savior, that's through the one that paid the penalty for sin, and he did that on the cross, didn't he? He did that on the cross. He did that by proving it through the empty tomb. Rose again from the dead. Your word is settled, Lord. Your word is settled. This Psalm 119, when God says His word is settled, His word has existed from eternity past, and it will continue to, to, to exist forever in the future. You know, my mind cannot, uh, cannot process eternity. Anyone here actually say you can, uh, you can think about being happy forever. I mean, there's moments of happiness that we experience here, but then I find in my life that reality quickly, quickly drains that happiness from me sometimes. You know? We certainly don't want to get into any sports analogies around the Chicago land area this week, do we? Football, baseball, or otherwise. My goodness. Maybe we're going to beat those Packers. We're going to stop those Packers. We're going to do this. They won't know what hit them. That's what I was hearing. All these guys on the radio. I turned on the radio the next day after the game. All these excuses. Well, you know, we weren't able to do this. We weren't able to do that. We were... Well, what were we going to do? Being happy, why well, would have been happy if, if we would have won? But sometimes in life we lose. Sometimes in life we lose. But the spiritual application of all of that this morning is that God's word is settled. It was settled in his mind before he even created this world. Even before he created this world. In the book of Hebrews, Paul says that God revealed it. God revealed His love, He revealed His mercy, He revealed His grace in different time frames as He chose to. Now, the job that you do, Perry, did they take everything, the first day that you started, did they take one big book and say, Here you go, Perry, we want you to know this whole book right now? How many, how many years have you been doing your job? I've been at the same company for 30 years. 30 years. So it's been, is it fair to say it's been a gradual learning process? And there's probably even been changes on things that were, but now they've changed to something else over the years. And there's been a way for all of us. Life is a gradual learning process. And that's what God wants us to do. As, as He reveals His Word to us, there's different times in our lives as God reveals His Word to us. When we're a baby Christian, we might not be able to handle, as the Bible says, the meat, the steak, the filet mignon of the Word. But we can handle the milk from the bottle as any baby would. We can understand the things about God's love. We can understand the things that we need to go and tell. We can understand the things about living God's life. An example of truth. As we grow, we need to understand that there's more responsibilities. Perry said over a lifetime of 30 years on his job, he knows more today than he did when they, they hired him. 
And that's what we as Christians need to do. That's what stewardship is all about. We can't always do more in quantity. I think our quality needs to adjust. The quality of, of, of servantship to the Lord is, is very, very important. And we need to work on that. We need to strive for that. Sometimes we'll have good days. Sometimes we'll be not so good. But we know the promise of God does not change. We know that there's many other verses in this. We've not read this 119th Psalm lately. Read it. I encourage you to read it. I mean, there's other verses in this Psalm 119 that talk about the testimony. The righteousness of your testimony, Lord, is everlasting. Concerning your testimony, Lord, I have known of all that you have founded them forever. The word that you say to us is true, Lord, from the beginning. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. You know the guy said to me one time, Kevin, well, you know, God's judgment isn't fair. If God gave us the judgment that we deserve, what would that be? Four letter word that begins with H, right? I don't want to go there. I don't want God's judgment. I want God's mercy. I want God's grace. As we embark upon this stewardship campaign, it's important that we understand that steward, the, the, the grace and mercy and the love aspects of the stewardship that each one of you offer to St. John's as a church. It's important to understand that the stewardship aspects of the grace and mercy in our lives help build us up to be useful vessels of service for God every single day. And everything that we're doing, as we're good stewards of God's Word, we're good stewards to one another. We're good stewards to our family. We're better mothers. We're better fathers. We're better brothers. We're better sisters. We're better friends. We're better acquaintances. We're better. Our stewardship is in line with what God wants us to do. In the book of Isaiah, he made a wonderful claim to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8. And he said, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand, can you guess the next word? Forever. Forever. And Peter even expanded upon this. Uh, when he talked about the Christian life and the Christian walk and the Christian experience there in 1 Peter 1.23, he said that we are born again. Not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and bideth, in that word again, forever. The word of God, which liveth and bideth forever. There's a school of thought going around today where people said, well, you know, God really doesn't mean what he says. Oh, trust me. He does. He does. And verses like this pair of that, and God says that if His Word lives and abides forever, it's a very important we believe God and trust Him and His Word. None of us get away with anything in the eyes of God. And this includes your pastor too. Remember, I haven't used this analogy in a while, but when I point this hand out there, there's four fingers pointing back at me, three fingers and a thumb. It goes four times for me. And none of us get away with anything to God. He knows our hearts. He knows the truth. He knows our excuses. Our, our Bible study coming up, we're going to be talking a little bit about Moses. Moses. We're talking about baby Moses this week. But as Moses grows up and God calls him to do various things, leaving the children of Israel out of Egypt, Moses begins to make excuses. I know none of us here today have ever made excuses. Except me. We all make excuses. And Moses was no different than any of us. Well, I can't do this. I can't speak. You know, I can't lead. Uh, no one will listen to me. None of us have any mercy or grace or power outside of God. Endowing us with it. That's what stewardship is all about. Of having the power of God in your life. Being able to minister for Him the way that He wants you to. 
to guarantee this great truth beyond any further question, the Lord Jesus, as I bring this to a conclusion for the day. Lord Jesus himself made this claim in the New Testament. In the book of Matthew 24, and verse 35, Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle, it's the old King James expression, but one jot or one tittle, I mean, that's like the dot on the I, or the cross on the T. Until God fulfills all, He means what He says. None of those things will be unfulfilled. They'll all be fulfilled as God has said. So our entire physical universe today is literally under decay, isn't it? I was walking through one of my dad's fields when I was here, there in... Uh, in May, for Mother's Day. He had a bunch, I may have shared this with you before, but he sent a bunch of people who, was because he's got you know, property, people like to store their boats on his property. And he had one guy who has since died left, he must have left 20 boats on the property. And uh, my dad's been trying to get rid of these boats, but they've sat there for years and years and years. And the boats were, they were new boats when they were put on the property. The tires were new. But now you go in, you kick one of the tires and just the dry rot just, just kind of came off. And you go to you know, touch one of the boats and it's in a category of decay. Everything decays. I mean, oh, it wasn't, uh, it didn't decay because of it was in use. It just decayed because of the elements, because of time, and the effect of the sun, and all the different things, wind and rain, and all that. Our universe is in a, <coughs> a spirit of decay. A physical law of decay. It's all passing away. But there's one thing this morning as we go into our stewardship campaign that will never decay. There's one thing that lasts forever, and that is what again? Word of God. The Word of God, God's Word is forever. God's Word never decays, it never loses its potency. You ever go to put some batteries in, Terry, and you look at the batteries and you go, oh, these expired two years ago. They lost the potency. They decay. They decay. Even though they weren't used, they decay. God's word never decays. The words of our Bible and its glorious promises are eternal today. So as we embark upon stewardship 2019, your time, your talents, your finances, let the word of God motivate you as you address how he wants you to be a good steward of his showers of blessings in your life today. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah.